house here and in my kitchen in the suburbs of Japan. Today we are going to be making three of the most common Japanese stocks. These are iriko dashi, kombu dashi and katsuo dashi. In English that is sardine stock, seaweed stock and katsuo stock. Katsuo is a type of fish. Of course, there are plenty of other Japanese broths and stocks. There are some more time-consuming ones, such as the famous tonkotsu broth for tonkotsu ramen, which is made of pork bones. And then there are a few other less time-consuming ones, such as some of the fish broths and even some mushroom stocks. But these three are the ones that people use on the most regular basis. And if you put some of these together, you can make an awase dashi, which just literally means a mixed stock. All three of these stocks are really simple to make. You don't have to put them on the stovetop all day or all night, and you only need that one ingredient plus water to make them. Basically, for each one, you either have to soak them and then boil them, or boil them and then soak them, and you'll get the flavor out. The process behind making these stocks is very simple, but if this is your first time into Japanese cuisine, you might not know what these ingredients are, so let's take a look at them. So first up, we have the kombu. This is basically a type of dried seaweed, and it comes with this kind of white powder on it, which is actually mannitol, which is the source of a lot of the umami flavor. So you don't want to brush this off before you soak it. Next up, we have the eko, which is a type of small sardine. These are also dried and they come packaged whole. And lastly, we have the katsuo. So this is katsuo bushi, which is from the katsuo fish. And it's basically just dried fish flakes. They're very, very light. And you often see these as toppings on takoyaki or okonomiyaki or other things. But today we're going to use it to make the katsuo stock. And all three of these ingredients are pretty much mainstays in Japanese cooking, so you should be able to find them in Asian supermarkets, but you might have a little bit of difficulty with the iriko. So let's start by making the kombu dashi, because we need to soak the kombu to use it. You need to soak the kombu for at least 30 minutes or up to overnight. Obviously, the longer that you soak it, the more flavor that you're going to get out of it. So I'm doing a 500 milliliter stock here, so I'm going to put this with five grams of kombu. It doesn't have to be exactly five grams, but basically one small piece. So I'm going to soak this in those 500 milliliters and leave it for 30 minutes. And we can see that before I put it in, it's very, very hard, but as soon as you put it into the water, it already starts to soften up. And now that it's been 30 minutes, it has softened completely. It's very, very jiggly. And now we're going to put it onto the heat. To bring out as much flavor as possible, we're going to heat this very, very slowly. So put it on a very low heat and bring it up to a just bare simmer. And once it is bubbling like this, then we want to take the kombu out. If you leave the kombu in for any longer than this, it will start to get slimy and bitter and you won't have the nice kombu dashi taste anymore. And we're just going to pour that into a heatproof container and there you go, kombu dashi ready to go. Next up is the iriko dashi. This takes a tiny bit more preparation because we're going to have to remove the heads and guts of the iriko and then we're also going to soak them before we put them on the heat. So first to prepare our iriko, then we've got our iriko here and we're going to take off the heads and the guts. So the heads all just come straight off like this. And then we're going to break them in half and take out the black part, which is the guts. We want to take off the head and the guts because this will make it very bitter otherwise. Then you'll just have to discard those parts and we're going to put the bodies into the water. So we're keeping this part, but this is what we're discarding, the heads and the guts. A 
Again, we're going to soak this for 30 minutes or up to overnight. Now that these have soaked, let's put it onto the heat. So once again, we're going to slowly bring these to a boil and this will bring out as much flavor as possible. However, these are going to make a bit of foam as you are boiling them, so you can just scoop that away, trying to leave as much of the broth behind as possible. This part is slightly different to the kombu, however, because once it gets to a boil, then we're going to leave them to simmer for 10 minutes. And now that they've done simmering for 10 minutes, we're going to put them through a fine mesh sieve into a heatproof container. And then we have our eriko dashi. So now let's go on to our katsu dashi. And now our final one is our katsu dashi, which is probably the easiest one because we don't need to soak them overnight or even for 30 minutes. We're just going to put them straight into the water. So I'm just going to bring this water to a boil without any katsu flakes in it. And now that it's boiling, we're going to add our fish flakes to it. And as soon as you've put those fish flakes in there, we're going to turn off the heat. And we're just going to let it steep for 10 minutes. And once you've let them sit there for 10 minutes, then we're just going to put that through another fine mesh sieve. And we've got our cat's wall dashi. Because this is the lightest and flakiest, it's the most likely to come out with a few little bits. So if you don't like that, you can put a piece of kitchen paper over the top of your sieve as you pour it in, and that will catch any of the dusty parts. And that's it for our, all of our main Japanese stocks. They all have quite a different color, and actually they have different colors to what I was expecting. I usually just have these in a pot, so I don't really see the exact color difference. But the Eriko Dashi has probably the strongest flavor, so I was expecting it to have the strongest color, but actually it's quite a sort of milky white color which is interesting. These all have very different flavors and you can use them together or you can use them apart and you can use them in different Japanese dishes for different flavors. And this can also be the base for a simple miso soup. I hope you learned something. If you did then give me a like or hit that subscribe button but that's it for today so I'll see you next Sunday.